Hello friends, uh, it's been a while and you may have seen some videos that I've posted but really I haven't posted anything of substance for uh, last year and I just kind of wanted to take the time for this video to talk about it. This is a talking head video so I'll throw up some, um, some illustration work so hopefully you can chill out and listen to the woes of me, um, but just for this video. So I, I do want to start off with saying that last year was really tough. I mean, I started this channel um, and I felt like I was in a really good place to be able to document and show the things that I was doing with my artwork. Um, and what I didn't know is that the back surgery that I had was going to throw the year into, well, just, just throw the year. Um, in my videos, I did mention that I had back surgery. Uh, what I didn't mention was that, uh, the surgery was supposed to be an outpatient surgery and it ended up being a week long, um, visit in the ICU. And for any non-Americans that are watching, that's basically the most expensive week-long vacation that you will ever have on the planet. Um, and through that, I, I just didn't realize that I was going to have that. I didn't realize that I was going to have the extensive amount of physical therapy that came with it, um, as well as I had restrictions until September on like how much I could lift and even just the types of things that I could do. Uh, and then I also had a chronic fatigue flare up to end all chronic fatigue flare ups, which apparently that's normal after a surgery. I did not realize how badly it was going to be. And now I'm the type of person that I truly believe in before all else, heal the body. Um, and it, it, it was hard for me, and thankfully the company I work for has the same ethos, so they were very understanding when I, I had to step back uh, for a while just to kind of deal with everything. And if you hear chewing, my dog has a new chew toy, and I only partially apologize. Then in October of last year, my father passed away and I had to take the trip back to California where most of my family lives and try to be there and be supportive as much as I could at that time. And really that trip reminded me of how much of a toxic environment that was and is for me. Um, thankfully, I did have my support dog Alistair with me on the trip. So that really kind of helped my mental state while I was there. But coming back to the Pacific Northwest, it really made me thankful that I was able to move out of California when I did. And that's been just about 10 years now. During the holidays after that, um, I started taking a drug, which unfortunately I'm going to be on for the rest of my life. That's lovely. Um, and it's part of this family of drugs that triggers my um, EBD and triggers it to cause me to have chronic fatigue flare-ups. And basically what happens is that my body starts to attack my immune system and at the same time my EBV blocks insulin from getting into my muscles. So I have a buildup of insulin in my body and it can't go anywhere. Um, and then on top of that, my muscles don't get the fuel it needs because it needs the insulin. So my muscles become um, easily exhausted. And this medicine helps filter out um, that excess insulin along with some other drugs that, I, that I'm on as well. Um, and it's just not very fun. But what does this mean? Get, all, all of this means that um, my energy levels on any given day are like 80% of a normal person's before the drug. Now that I'm on this drug, it's more like I'm at 40% of normal energy levels of a regular person. Um, and, and that's, 
that's fun to not have energy to get you through the day. And then in December, I also started a mentorship um, that I had already paid for earlier on in the year. Um, year? Year. Earlier on in the year. And I shouldn't have done it. I, I shouldn't have done it. It was badly time for my health, my mental state, um, and it also created a, uh, I don't want to say created, it exasperated a worsening problem with my dominant hand, which also caused me to go through massive amounts of physical therapy um, because of the issues that were creeping up. Um, and basically made me have to relearn how to draw, um, how to hold utensils that I draw with differently, learning how to build them up correctly so that my I, I can have longevity in my hand. And for an artist, all of these things are incredibly um, frustrating for lack of a better word, it's uh, incredibly frustrating to have to, after 30 years of, of drawing a certain way and having your technique down and being known what you're known for, um, that you're not able to do it anymore. So really trying to figure out how to continue doing what I love to do, which is artwork um, in a more sustainable way. And, all of this really kind of, it, it restarted a grieving process for me. I, I've had chronic fatigue for many, many years and period times I have grieved over the years for the loss of my former self. But this time it, it hit me a little bit differently. Um, it's, you know, I, I grieve for the, the physical loss that I will no longer be as healthy ever again as healthy as I was in previous years. Um, I grieve for the loss of my past self, of, of the things that I used to do and the things that I love to do that I can't do anymore. And it kind of hits you in different ways. Uh, this time it hit me, <laughs> I, was, I was crying in a Target parking lot, which I believe is a book, I haven't read it yet. Um, and I was crying because uh, I wasn't able to pick up a, like I wasn't able to physically pick up an eight pound bag of kitty litter for, for my baby back there. Um, and I asked all of the sales associates that were there, no one, no one wanted to help me. They were too busy to help me. They couldn't help me. And so I just kind of dropped everything and left. And when I was sitting in the car crying, it wasn't because of the sales associates or anything like that. It was because I used to work out with 50 pound sandbags for fun. And the shame of me not being able to pick up an eight pound bag and carry it to uh, the till was really, was really frustrating. And it just, it all came out at that point. But here's the beautiful thing. The beautiful thing about grief is that it's really a chance to be reborn, if you will. And, and it's exciting because you get to look through new eyes and learn new truths about yourself. And it, it kind of helps you turn your brain to the what's next frequency and you start listening to things that maybe you wouldn't have listened to. Maybe you would have dismissed them in the in the old state of you. And so in that spirit, right? So this channel was originally supposed to be about creativeness and working that hustle. Well, it's changing. And it's changing because I have no hustle left. Um, I've said this for years. I, I don't have hustle. Um, and so now I'm focused on the art that really brings me joy, um, the art that makes me happy. And I am changing this channel to be more how to create joy while living with a chronic illness. I'm still me. I'm still Jeannie Hart of JH Illustrates, uh, only focused, which is 
a difficult thing to do on any given day, but I am focused on how to feel satisfied and to have joy when dealing with um, chronic illness. And as for me, you know, I am here to create joy, right? Create joy through my work and create joy for myself. And that may sound selfish, and, but I'm ready to focus on endeavors that are purely for um, joy and creating and elevating my brand of joy. Everyone has their own brand of joy, um, but so I'm gonna elevate my brand of joy. And I really do hope that you stay tuned for future videos. Um, may it be for solidarity or hopefully for art that inspires you. In either case or any case, I'm happy that you're here and that you're able to spend a little time with me. Um, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful